Rockport has been self-funded uh, and generated from revenues that we're producing within the various businesses that we've built. Um, so we funded ourselves. Yeah, and did that from day one. I actually remember there are cubes that you guys built for us right at the beginning. I, I think Will and I, or Rick and I constructed the first, uh, first office. Yes, we did that ourselves. Yeah. We took a sledgehammer to the walls and knocked them down and went from there. So we're entrepreneurs. Yeah, I mean, I think I think we've upgraded since then. But uh, we we measure in terrace size. We uh, we started off with this little little thing out a window that we could stand outside, and we went down for to our four seventy seven, which had a nice wraparound terrace, very narrow, to uh, our pictures that you can see. Uh, we kind of like where we are. The short answer: We have believed in self funding. Um, we are getting. We talked earlier about the moral obligation between us and employees. Uh, many times when you bring in capital, external capital, it allows you to grow much quicker. But also the flip side of that is in a downturn, and we've as I said, we've been through three downturns. The immediate reaction is if you brought that capital, their advice to you is to cut, cut people fast. And we don't believe in that. I think what we're, we're trying to balance is how do we scale to meet more needs, but keep keep our soul, keep the DNA of what we're delivering to clients. And I think that that's kind of a, a pitfall that we've seen in the technology landscape, which is, you know, growing too quick, being able to kind of get the next round of clients, but lose what, what value you add and then become an organization that clients don't want to use. I mean, I think there's always been the, the build versus buy, you know, discussion in the market. I think that that hasn't gone away. I think there are, you know, perceptions that, oh, with all this technology, AWS, we can just, you know, implement our own system um, and, and just get it done. I think that, you know, we find that they end up coming to us and saying, hey, can you rewrite what we built, uh, you know, quickly because we thought we could just do it. As the technology changes and, you know, is perceived as easier to use, you know, how do you kind of show clients that, you know, it's the devil's in the details, the data matters, how you interact with it, so. Well, your job classically is you think 10 years ahead and we have to catch up with those ideas. Right, years like, like I said earlier, he's a visionary and, you know, visionaries look very, you know, far in the future. I think, well, I think we're just getting to some of the visions that you had 20 years ago. <laughs> Unfortunately, that is totally true. But I, th I think we've done it in a way where, you know, we are really providing that value to the clients and we're not, you know, just quickly building features that, you know, seem like they fix the problem, but in the end, just create a mess for clients. So I, I think that's a lot of that we, we combat with, uh, with other systems our clients use is that this sort of looked like it did what we needed, but in the end of the day, you know, we did all the work outside the system, not in the system. Many, many of our clients will, you know, particularly corporations that we compete against, will go outside and hire, hire consultants to come in and do surveys and figure out what the market is. We don't, we don't, I don't think we've ever gone out for a survey um, because we have an understanding of people we have have in-depth market knowledge uh, and we look at and analyze what, it, what is needed. So we don't do the surveys. But then on the flip side, we've got to build it and it's not always easy. That's another thing that we do, which is, I, I think it's an art. It's, it's something that we've had to develop over the years, which is really trying to get to the base needs, not wants. Because I think those wants create, you know, inefficient systems, create a lot of pain long-term. So kind of converting those and synthesizing those into like, what, what does the business truly need and accomplishing that? In my mind, and as Will said, uh, uh, well, as growing up, there was one thing that was important and that was integrity. So, um, so to me, it means everything. I, I, th I think it's also why we've had people stay here a very long time, because we, we do what we say. And I think that that works internally. I think it is also something that when we go to clients and we say, we can do this, we can help you, we stand behind that. Yeah, my, my simplistic view is people do not listen to what you say, they listen to what you do. Uh, and the integrity makes that easy. What we're doing with the camaraderie we've got and uh, what we're capable of doing, I think we barely scratched the surface. If I look at where we are today versus where I've been any time in the, in the last 40 years, the opportunity sitting in front of us is, is a multiple 
of any time I've ever seen. So I think we have a tremendous amount to do. There's a tremendous need out there. Uh, there is going to be tremendous need, tremendous change um, in the world of, in, in our world of commercial real estate finance and equity. Um, so that uh, we want to participate in that. And as I say, I think we barely scratched the surface and it's fun. So I'm looking forward to doing it for a lot of more years. <laughs>